and Jack laying half I should go buy it. End of review. Bitten by a rattlesnake, he bought from a traveling circus before it went down. He was honoring Jesus with his rattlesnake dare. What my sound preferences are, I like bass. I like, and if it can have quantity and quality, uh, yeah, I'm rocking it. Especially mid bass. I like the slam over the sub bass rumble. I like my mids super clean. I'm um, not a big fan of, of overly colored, overly thick, overly warm mids. Not a big fan of that. And highs that are very sweet and seem to be able to keep up without ever being overbearing or in your face. So. To come so soon. Let's use that to enhance our message while we're pushing through. find this set incredibly awesome value for $399. Having seen your game, I really don't know what to say. 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 Fuck, you've been running my show way more efficient than I ever did. I don't know how you do it, but you have some real guts, heaven forbid. <laughs> so I decided to leave it to you and hell, I'm your biggest fan. You know, a devilish fire saying nothing to your systematic extermination plan.
Hello, let's do this. Let's rock it like Conky Dong. This is the Elysian Acoustical Labs Pilgrim. These little beauties right here. Um, been teasing around for a little while. Not just me. I'm not the only one that's guilty about these. A lot of hype build up. I'm here to tell you that the hype is legit. Uh, lots of people got their ears on on Can Jam in Singapore and had much praise. And I think that is truly legit. And there was also lots of stuff out there about uh, its sound signature. And I'm here to tell you how the monk hears it. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Elysian Acoustical Labs Pilgrim. I'm not going to show you an unboxing uh, because I did a whole unboxing video to make this one a little shorter. Let's get down to the meat of this, shall we? One 9.2 millimeter LSR liquid silicone rubber. Now, they're not talking about the actual cone. That's something different and special. They're talking about the surround of the suspension of the actual dynamic driver. Um, and the actual cone itself is a magnesium aluminum hybrid. So it's a metal dome dynamic driver. And typically in those, you get uh, the typical characteristics of metal dome speakers are its very fast transient response uh, and very uh, low distortion. And the rubber surrounds do a very good job typically in the highest end speakers to make sure the cone stays in control. And that does exactly that. Um, after about 100 hours, and I will tell you that uh, this is one of those IMs that did make a, a noticeable uh, difference in its uh, sound uh, after it had some playtime on it. So this is my set. This one was purchased uh, by myself, and um, sure glad I did. Thank you to Hi-Fi Go for allowing me to do the early purchase. I do appreciate that. Let's talk about that 9.2 millimeter as we go through this review. This dynamic driver sound signature of the dynamic itself is textured. It is punchy. It is musical. It goes low. Uh, it doesn't complain when uh, volume goes up, that's for sure. Uh, has a really nice kind of decay and speed, uh, letting the notes finish, yet it is fast enough accurately reproduce the next hit with some attack. And that's a really good bunch of qualities in a dynamic driver, and uh, especially if that's doing your bass, which this bad boy is. Now, there's also three Sonyan balanced armatures. Now, those balanced armatures that are in this bad boy are Sonyan. And if you've any, watched any of my videos before, I have a love for Sonyan balanced armatures. In the mids especially, over no-name brand or Knowles. Because I like their way that they are very musical, uh, very accurate, uh, and smooth. So the way they just produce uh, mid-range is very organic. It, it, it doesn't seem to strain, or and it plays into the big part of the pitch of the voices, the timbre of the, of the instruments, uh, and the vocal tonality. So the 2300 series is what's used a single balanced armature used in the Pilgrim. Sonyan Dos E50 series are used for the highs. And again, I actually prefer Knowles um, for the high frequencies, but I gotta tell you that this pair of Sonyans in here are exceptional. I really like the way they do it. I don't find that they're laid back, and that's kind of why I like the, the Knowles sometimes a bit more in the 
balanced armatures for the highs because it gives a bit more edge and more information. Well, none of that is missing in here. It's, it was an excellent, excellent choice. Um, they do a wonderful job. Presenting string instruments uh, with great micro details and air without ever sounding thin or sharp. And um, that's thing, one of the standout features of this set is also the micro details that this set can produce when, and again, it has to do with its overall balance tuning. We'll get more into that as well. This three-way crossover. Uh, now, so... There's going to be a different version of this called the Noir Black. And uh, it's supposed to have a little bit warmer tuning uh, and a higher end cable. I'm not going to buy that one because you can do a whole lot with different things. Tips, sources, cables. Um, and I find it this one is bang on for me. Uh, if I wanted something, and I just came off of two other IMs. One was the Shanling ME600, which was the kind of uh, tubby, bassy, um, kind of really nice mids, uh, funky stage. Love that IM. Really nice chill set. Then there was the, the full party wagon, the uh, nice uh, HCK Himalaya. Uh, yeah, the party bus pulls up and it drags your ass on board and doesn't let you leave. Then there's this set. This set is the very wonderfully tuned, balanced, tonally accurate set. Like you add those 329, this one's 399, and the Shanling at again 3, uh, 329. You add all, all these three, you're not far over a thousand dollars and there's a whole bunch of iams a whole bunch of iams that are asking way more than a thousand bucks that you will not get if you picked up say these three sets you're done right you're you've got a you've got them all you've got every your bases covered whatever your mood whatever your genre you'd have it all covered for just over a thousand bucks so anyway keep that in mind I find this set incredibly awesome value for $399. You saw that unboxing. If not, go watch it. It's definitely uh, a bit of a surprise for this price point. The interesting part about that uh, little specs on that I was reading about this thing, about talking about this dynamic driver and its ability to be able to reproduce uh, subsonic stuff like 10 hertz, I will say that statement is true. Uh, playing that uh, head, ultimate headphone test disc uh, and some other tracks that it, on my playlist, which is on title and now in the description, you can see that. Uh, this driver is very, very capable. This is, is a very, very high quality driver. Um, they're also saying the top end can go to 20 kilohertz. Well, Kilo will probably hear that, but I certainly can't. Um, but it does sound like it has fantastic air um, up top there as well. So the 9 ohm resistance, is that going to be an issue? No, I don't think so. Uh, 101 dB sensitivity kind of means that it's going to be fairly easy to drive. Though this... Uh, I tried it on the EPZ TP20 dongle, 151 milliwatts. It was good. You switch over to the TP50 with, with almost double that uh, power, and it's noticeable. The headroom, the transients. So the Pilgrim likes power. Doesn't require it to get up to volume, but if you feed it some juice, that's kind of a generalization for any IM in my opinion, the more juice you feed it, the happier it's going to be. So I would so, uh, recommend if you're picking this up or putting uh, this on a dongle, uh, find something that's at least 100 uh, milliwatts of power. Uh, on the And again, that's where balanced output is going to come into play more than uh, single-ended, right? You'll be able to get more juice to it, right? So... Now, that SPC cable, let's talk about this proprietary Pentacon 
uh, ends. Now, we're not talking about the Pentacon 4.4 balance end. I am talking about these little guys that look similar to MMCX, but they're not. They're not swappable, uh, they're not interchangeable, and they are a different... Uh, they are a refined, better version of MMCX. I love them to smithereens. I haven't had another IM that has Pentacon. I wish everything did. Honestly, they're fantastic. They're easier to detach than your typical MMCX. Um, but when they make a connection, they're truly excellent. The other reason why I love these things so very, very much is uh, when you're in putting them in your ear, right? So unlike two pin, they can't do any kind of rotation where this just seems to be let you able to uh, get it in your ear, rotate the cable around and get a very good fitment. And fitment's gonna play a big part into uh, your sound impressions of this too. So this, uh, I'll talk about this SPC cable too. It is beautiful. Uh, it is tangly free. It is um, very well paired. You, you wouldn't need to buy another cable to make you happy. This is a quality cable. I think it will last. It looks good. It's terminated nicely. It's a bit plain. It's a bit mundane. There's uh, not a whole lot going on it. The Elysian uh, logo is on here. The chin slider actually works great. Um, so zero complaints about the cable. That's not what's on my set. This is a different cable and I'll talk about that um, right now, actually. It's on my notes to say, here you go. This is a Hakuge. Uh, pure copper cable, 7N, uh, called a Lucky Voice, I think it is, it's about $51, so it's not really that expensive. Um, why I really liked this cable uh, on the Pilgrim is that it did something that the SPC, the SPC is fantastic for people who do like a little bit of extra shimmer in the top end because that's what the I think the silver is doing in that cable it's adding a little bit of uh, upper end uh, specialness uh, but I also found it uh, added a little bit of like the sound difference between these two cables is the stock one added a little bit of glare a little shimmer up top a little bit too much and the pure copper cable just took it down a, a little a, a tiny notch but it also added some vocal weight and especially to female vocals like I was listening to one track Alanis Morissette and this one got edgy uh, where the SPC cable in a direct comparison just mellowed it out just enough to make it perfect uh, still had that edginess to her vocals but it took the the extra little grid off that would kind of make your ears go mm, right um so there you go and this cable can be ordered uh with a, a pentacon um and as well so just so you know i've had about eight of these cables um and this one was really well done but i had six of them that had failed so just keep that in mind. Um, cloth cables, especially around where the ear. This one was, in the ones that I've had, particularly prone to failure. So I'm not advocating for this cable. I'm just letting you know uh, the difference I heard between a pure copper cable and a non, and an SPC cable. Now, one thing you're also going to notice on mine well, you're not going to notice because I'm going to... There's some pen-on black lacquer tips on here. But underneath those, there is a little blue and red ring. Now, I cut them down to... I'd say that's probably around two millimeters. Um, and what I why I did that is the nozzles on the Pilgrim are a little short. 
So some people might have some fitment issues. And if you're going to have fitment issues, you're also going to have sound issues. This is going to sound l much less bassy. It's going to sound thin in the mids. It's going to sound tinny up top. And uh, using these pen-on lacquer tips uh, and using that little O-ring so the the tip doesn't go down as far onto the nozzle shaft it extends it out for me just perfectly so that was a little t tip about a tip that you can also use as well um, to help you get maybe a little bit longer length on your ear tips that uh, are your favorite and provide a good seal so definitely worked for me and I got a chance to do a little blue and red um, O-ring on there because, you know, I struggle. Struggle is real. Um, so that's that little nozzle tweak. You might need it uh, for a deeper insertion um, and getting these nozzles a little bit longer. That's important, I think, to really pay attention to that because um, fitment and uh, tips are going to be paramount in your impressions. So... Those little O-ring uh, is fantastic. Before I get into some CPR by Cupcake, um, yes, I had some fun with this one. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to do a comparison because a, a bunch of people kept asking me, how does it compare to the... People are saying it compares like the Pula is very... The, is... With everything there. Let's get into some pros and cons i think uh some the standout unboxing first of all the price 399 uh again it's 400 uh so it's not a 20 20 dollar i am this is not a cheap i am but it's also not two thousand dollars it's not an annihilator right um and the unboxing was a pretty good it's the reason i did it i mean it was a bit of a surprise it wasn't just your average you know blah blah blah, blah. had a story in it had uh some it was well done and i appreciated it especially for 400 bucks um let's talk about more of the pros like uh, what i really love i love the fit and finish again here's another one of these ims that are so well crafted the workmanship the way that the top plate again just like i said with the himalaya aligns perfectly perfectly smooth the attention to details is standout the and you and it's really hard to see because you really can't see it but the stainless steel top plates there's some that are polished and there's some that are non just like the rest of the shell mat um, and it really has a wow factor a pop uh on that that the pictures don't do it justice they really don't the elysian logos on its side again just really well done um left and right it tells you on the bottom and then the serial number um number 71 so very good there Let's talk about its sound more importantly, right? I think this is an incredibly well-balanced set. Um, once you have more or less your source picked out, if you wanted a more, more or less warm source, uh, your ear tips, your cable, and you've got all that dialed in, you can achieve sound tuning preference nirvana. It, this set uh, is very sculptable, it's very moldable, it's very open, it's very transparent. So changing a cable, uh, and it's revealing enough to, to actually hear that difference. Changing sources, huge difference. Tips, the whole shebango, right? Again, in if you're watching reviews and you're reading reviews, make sure you understand maybe the reviewer's preferences and... Um, and the sources uh, play a big part and then pay attention to tips if they're using a narrow bore tip uh, or a wide bore tip um, to sculpt you get a good feel of that right the narrower the bore the typically the more people are trying to reduce the high frequencies 
you notice I didn't go here. And in fact, uh, when I graph this, graph, anyway, uh, timber, tonality, uh, pitch, all pitch perfect for me. And uh, for me, for what I think it sounds like, right? Uh, Alanis set. It, do I, what do I think of her voice? Gordon Dowie, uh, Angus Young, right? Whatever. Uh, if How I perceive that their voices should sound, this set sounds extremely natural to me. Bass is standout. It's super textured. Um, I, again, I heard people say it's bass shy. It's, it's not. Uh, check your tips. Um, with a perfect blend of sub oomph, it goes, it's a great driver and tight, punchy bass. Again, uh, that sweet spot of faster decay and then letting notes, uh, each note finish. It does a wonderful job in doing that. The mids are just like the rest of the tuning, in my opinion, um, neutral, clean, uncolored, resolving, and most importantly, musical. There's a lot of balanced sets out there that are balanced in the tuning, but damn, are they boring to listen to? And this is not one of those sets at all. This is a very engaging uh, set because it's so clean and detailed um, and musical at the same time. So um, instrumentals, uh, vocals all have the right weight for me again once uh, I have dialed this in. Um, and again, that had a big part to do with sources. So I have a love-hate relationship with this Can N3 Ultra. I love the way it sounds. I just hate the way it operates. It's the software sucks balls. But uh, hopefully they're fixing that. Review coming soon. Anyway, this is a very clean, very resolving. Bass is fast on this deck, and the stage is fantastic um, when you're in, especially into modern tube mode. It's a great, great sounding DAP. Over my warmer Shanling uh, M8, M5U, this was by far the best choice. Now, even over my, the Con Max was also a fantastic pairing with this IM. This, this IM sucks up the source. Uh, warmer source, Pilgrim will sound warmer. More resolving source, again, brings out the airiness, the details, the micro nuances, all of that stuff. Uh, and sources will definitely play a part in that as well. Um, I chose something as uh, less colored, um, and that's the N3 Ultra can for me with this IM. So I'm not trying to sculpt the IM in too much of any way. I really liked the way it was, and I didn't want to muck with any of that. Um, some, uh, let's talk about that stage for a second. So I was playing uh, Bubbles by Yossi Horakawa. Um, this track reveals a lot. It reveals a lot about uh, height, 3D, all, all the spatial clues, uh, and all three axes. So the width, the height, and the depth. And while the Pilgrim isn't the widest I've ever heard, it has a fantastic ability um, to project depth and height. And that's a rare feature in IMs and a welcome one. Pilgrim did it very well. So stage, um, and the way it places vocals and like say there's a vocal singer in the front and then there's a bunch of backups. Sometimes you could hear the in different tracks the backup singers behind the main singer, and, and you could legitimately tell that there was the backup singers maybe forefront. And um, again, that was a uh, that was something I noted, and uh, it was pretty good to talk about stage that can do that kind of revealing detail, right? So it goes overall in the overall kind of the way the pilgrim sounds. Some cons, okay, the cable. 
so first of all, not um, there's no modular option at this point. So you got to choose between single-ended and balanced. Okay, uh, it'd be nice to see a modular cable. Uh, the SPC cable, it might be too bright for some. It might be adding a little bit too much uh, upper end information and you might want to consider a pure copper SPC cable instead if you find that. Um, the nozzle length again might be a little bit too short for some to get a uh, proper fitment and then again um, my tip is to use a little that o-ring. Uh, I basically cut uh, some other ear tip that I wasn't used, probably a narrow bore, and I and I cut those little uh, off of the stem um, again about two millimeters, and I put it on the shaft, and it doesn't allow like in this case it, enough to to get that that little part that goes over top of the nozzle where it has a little indent to get a perfect grip in there but not going too deep. So I kind of gained a little bit of uh, nozzle length by making sure that the tip didn't go too far down on the shaft. Uh, when it bottoms out, maybe it hurts a little bit, you know. <laughs> stop it, stop it. This is terrible, terrible jokes. No one's gonna get this shit, Monk. Anyway, um, the ear tips, a little bit sparse, though they are nicely provided being spin tip 100s. It'd be nice to throw in a couple of foamies in there as well. Anyway, the Pentacon proprietary kind of little ends on there. Um, I, it, they're going to make it a little bit difficult for you to cable swap unless you happen to have, which I freakishly happen to have when I ordered by accident, um, making it a little bit more difficult for you to cable swap. And so it's nice to have an SPC that's included. I might suggest you try also a pure copper cable just to see... Uh, and if this works for you in the high frequencies, then by all means, uh, do, you don't need to do anything. But if you want to maybe add a little bit more vocal weight to, say, female vocals, which I thought it needed, um, that cable did it for me. Okay, mood lighting is on. Let's talk a little cupcake, a little CPR. Um, how did it do? Well, with some of this um, lovely vocals. Uh, clean. I actually love the textured bass. Very capable driver. Uh, crazy deep and wide 3D stage. This 3D stage that the Pilgrim uh, belts out, um, it's different track to track. Um, and that really had to do with, like, uh, at one minute, you, you, one track, you'd have the backup singers again forward and then the next track would be back uh, behind the lead singer so that was kind of uh, something I picked out uh, it, it's and it makes this song a fun fun replay um, scared by the tragically hip Gord Dowie's vocals are very well done uh, I love the tonality um, on this set the guitar uh, has an amazing details uh, and very nice micro details as well. Uh, to be able to pick up on those string plucks uh, and the naturalness uh, really in the realism of the uh, instrument replay was, was really well done. Maybe wishing for a tad more vocal weight and this was a comment that I had wrote before I switched over to the pure copper cable. Um, but on the N3U versus uh, a different source like the uh, Shandling M5 Ultra, uh, I would not want to trade the warmth from a warmer DAP uh, because I love the technical detail. So warmer source was out uh, because I loved how uh, revealing it was uh, with the Pilgrim. Don't Care Anymore by Phil Collins. And I like the drums on this song. 
Um, and on some IMs, the drum bits come off a bit soft and they come off a bit pillowy. The Pilgrim uh, plays this very nicely. Um, punchy bass, nicely weighted, uh, and a real nice decay uh, to the hits, uh, giving texture um, to the notes, uh, letting um, the trailing edge of the bass hit uh, finish and a bit of a bleed into the next, uh, so the decay into the next hit, it make it sounds the bass sounds really full uh, and letting the note finish very natural sounding bass the driver is great and that's what I pulled away from um, that track um, as well Alanis Morissette I love her edgy vocals and it can be too much on some um, revealing sources so the combination of the N3 Ultra for me in modern tube mode uh, pushes it right to the edge. Uh, a, it's a gripping, detailed replay, and oh my god, her vocals are very well done indeed. Micro details also, again, stand out here. Um, Flight of the Cosmic Hippo by Bella Fleck and the Fleckstones. Oh, that sub bass texture. Mm. Electric banjo uh, are terrific. Cymbal crashes are tastefully there to add some sparkle, but still very balanced um, and not overdone. This dynamic driver I wrote, again, is very good. You Look Good to Me by Oscar Peterson Trio. Now... What blew me away in this track was the nuances that I was picking up and the detail retrieval that the Pilgrim can do. Uh, it's off the hook. What a set for detail freaks. Um, and tonality aficionados. Really, really. Jazz approved. Absolutely. Piano the snares, the bass, the drums, they were all stand out in this track and you could pick them out clearly placement wise, depth wise, height wise. Um, yeah, I was pretty blown away. So again, really well done. Those were just a few track impressions. Next up, I kind of want to just uh, touch base uh, with verses. One particular I am because I've heard a few people and I I really loved the Pula PA02 or the Myer Audio uh, CKL VX D91. Same I am. I'll tell you straight up, they don't sound anything alike. Again, people who look at stuff on graphs and go, oh, I can, you know, that one sounds like that one because it has a very similar frequency response. They don't tell you anything about the tonality and about the timber and the, the nuances and the stage. None of that. It doesn't tell you that. Only when you do A-B comparisons in here. Now, I really love the pull-up PAO2. Uh, you guys know that. I was the one that brought it out into the market to showcase, and it really took off because it earned it. Under $200 banger. Well, this is double the money in the Pilgrim, and it's clearly an upgrade. Um, and when I say that, I'm going to talk about a couple tracks. Uh, so Sweet Dreams by Eurythmics. The Pilgrim has crazy 3D stage where the Pula fell down, um, hit its head a bit. The PAO2 does hit harder. And there definitely is more thicker mid-bass. And that's where the PAO2 plays warmer and vocals sound smoother on this track. And um, But the Pilgrim plays it more naturally. Um, and it has it on the stage as well. Um, it's a really, really different sound between the two IMs where the Pula sounds warmer thicker the Pilgrim sounds balanced smoother um, less colored that's for sure falling slowly uh, another track here uh, Pilgrim uh, has again 
I, I like the textured base of this. Um, and that was the difference between the PAO2. The PAO2 had 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 thick base, but it, it wasn't as defined or as mature as the Pilgrim, that's for sure. Um, and the Pilgrim, again, versus in this track, played way more balanced, very clean, neutral. And the But the mid-bass difference, again, between the PAO2 is noticeable. And the lower mids really, you could tell in this track, really colors the lower mids uh, on the PAO2 where the Pilgrim sounds again more natural and it also sounds less thin in the mids um, because it was more balanced out. The Pilgrim again uh, stage is better much less colored. Overall I mean between the two the Pilgrim really outclasses the PAO2. In terms of resolution, in terms of balance, correct timber, tonality, uh, and stage uh, base quality um, it goes to the pilgrim base quantity goes to the pao2 um, but if i were to describe the two i would say the pao2 is the colored version um, and the pilgrim is more of the balanced natural version with better technicalities and stage so that's how the two compare thank you now Let's sum this up. I should go buy it. End of review. Uh, I told you how I think it sounds. You'll get lots of impressions out there. I think for a four hundred dollar set, it does some things that I haven't heard another four hundred set do, and that is really it's. Ability to do micro details, nuances, picking out uh, all kinds of details you might not have heard before in some of your other gear. It does that really, really well. And doing it overall in a very balanced way. Nothing is overly boosted. Like the Himalaya had unapologetically wicked bass the way I tuned it. And I love it. This one is more balanced more and I'm, I'm not going to say it's neutral because it's colored in its own special Elysian sauce but it does it so tastefully done that uh, you won't notice uh, all you'll notice is uh, how much you're in your your this is one of these very rare sets that allows you to pick out the nuances the micro details while still not overloading your senses and making you pulling you away out of the music in fact it kind of does the opposite the the ability of the pilgrim to reveal and show you all the transients in the music while still maintaining its very musical nature is a very rare trait and at 399 um I think it does something completely wonderful that um, I haven't heard in a sub kilo buck IM range. That's it. That's uh, my full shilling of this IM. <laughs> this is Tony F. Monk. I'm out for now. <laughs>